Hi everyone, in this video we are going to see how to sync data from MongoDB to Elastic. Now let's think about a scenario where we need to have the data in both the data sources. For example, if we have a requirement where we need to search and the search has to happen based on certain attributes. For the fast search, we can keep those attributes within the Elastic and rest of the data can be kept in the MongoDB. Whenever we need to get the data, first of all, search can be done on Elastic and based on the key attribute, lookup can be done on MongoDB. For this purpose, we need to have the data in sync in both the systems. If we are updating the data from the application, and there can be two scenarios. First of all, if we are updating the MongoDB first and then updating the Elastic, then we may have the data out of sync because these are the sequential process. If we want to have the data updated at real time, we can have the parallel processing in which MongoDB as well as Elastic are updating in the same time. But the problem is, if MongoDB is getting updated and Elastic data is failing, or the other way around, in both the scenario, we might have the out of sync data. Is there any way in which we can do the real time sync? Answer is yes. We can use different frameworks such as LogStats. With LogStats, if we have the existing data that we want to sync into Elastic, or if we are adding new records in MongoDB, then again LogStats can help. But if we have the existing data which we are updating and that update we want to pass through the Elastic, LogStats does not support that. So we cannot use LogStats for our requirement. Second framework is the Mongo Connect. But Mongo Connect does not work with the latest version of Elastic and the MongoDB. Finally, we have Monsters. In this video, we are going to talk about it. How Monsters works is Whenever any change event is happening within the database, it listens to those events and based on those events, it will update the Elastic. So here we have the real time update of the data. In this video, we are going to see how we can install monsters and how can we configure to update the data in the Elastic. So let's get started. To work with monsters, first of all, we need to download the latest version. And that is what we can do from the monsters get repo. And here we have the monsters 6.7.11 if we download the zip file we will get executable for different os for mac for linux and for windows and if you just go within this here we have the monsters so we can just execute this or the second approach is we can just go to the git repo and from here we can clone the monsters git for the latest version we can check out the specific release release 6 and we just need to build it for building it, we also need to install the Go. If you have already installed, then good. Otherwise, you can just go to this Go documentation and from here you can download. I have already checked out the branch and here we have release 6. And within this, we have all the files related to monsters. To build this, we need to run the Go install command. This will install the monsters within the bin folder of the Go. So let's go to the bin folder and have a look. I have already exported the Go path. It's within the Go directory of the user. Now within this we have bin and within bin here we have got the monsters. From bin we can run the monsters command bin monsters. To provide the configuration to monsters we need to define one configuration file. That file we can pass to monsters with the hyphen f. Here we have the path of the file config.toml. Let's just have a look on this particular file. I have this config file here. Within this file you can see here first thing is mongodb url this is running in our local system and then the database name and here we have the elastic search url the syncing will happen from mongodb to the elastic and then you can pass rest of the detail of elastic or mongodb if it has ssl or other configuration all of them you can pass in here then we have the change stream namespaces this allows monsters to subscribe to the change stream of the specific namespace Name in space includes the database name and the collection name. Whenever any change happens in the database, database publishes an event for the change and that is subscribed by different applications. Here monsters is also subscribing to such event and whenever any change will happen within the customer collection within MyDB, monsters will take care of it and then it will push that data to Elastic. Then we have logs for different types of logs such as error, info, warn, trace. You can define the different files. So all the logs will be published to these files. We will talk about these configuration in some time. At this moment, let's see if we have Elasticsearch running. If I curl, 
localhost 9200. So here we have the Elasticsearch running. Let's run the monsters command. And here we are passing this config file that I have shown you. Because MongoDB is not running at this moment. So we have got some error and let's see that. So we have got the error in the error.log file. Unable to connect to MongoDB using this particular configuration. First of all, let's start the MongoDB and here I am running the MongoDB. Again, I am going to run the same command. At this time, I have got some different error. Error starting change stream. Change stream stage is only supported on replica sets. MongoDB can only publish the change stream when MongoDB is running in the replica set mode. That means we have one master and there can be different secondary nodes. At this time, when I am running the MongoDB without the replica set, change stream will not be published. So, Monsters is not going to subscribe that. That is why we are getting this particular error. So, we need to run the MongoDB in the replica set mode. If you want to understand what change stream is, so you can just go to the MongoDB documentation and here we have the change stream. So, applications can use change stream to subscribe to all the data changes on a single collection or a database. So whenever any change is happening in the database collection, so this event will be published and different application can subscribe to that event. This is what the Monastas is also doing. It is subscribing to the change stream. At this time, Monastas is not able to subscribe to the change event. For that, we would need to run the MongoDB in the replica set mode. I'm going to run that with the help of hyphen hyphen repl set and name of the replica set. It can be any name. This is a primary node that I am running. Here you can see a couple of errors. Cannot use non-local read concern until replica set is finished initializing. So we also need to initialize the replica set on the primary node. And we have just one node at the moment. So we need to initiate the replica set. That is what we can do by connecting to the Mongo instance. I am using this client. Can use any client. Here we have got the console for the MongoDB. To initiate the replica set, we just need to trigger the initiate command. Here we have rs.initiate and now it has started. Our MongoDB server is running with the replica set mode now. Here you can see we don't get any other errors. In the info log, here you can see successfully connected to MongoDB and listening for event. It is listening to mydb.customer event. Here I am going to use the database mydb. In the database, let's see if we have any data in the customer collection. We have a couple of attributes already added into this. In the elastic, let's check the indexes. So we don't have any index at this moment. That means whatever data is there in the database is not yet synced. I'll try to add some new data into this collection. So for that, I am here adding one data and let's say it is Adam and email Adam. Data is added into this database. We have got this Adam and now we will look at the elastic indexes. Here you can see we have got one new index created which is mydb.customer. This is the index we are getting because we have event that we are reading and that is reading to this change stream namespace mydb.customer. Whatever is the namespace by the same name it has created an index in the elastic and if we just look at the data within that we are just searching the data from mydb.customer. Here you can see we have got the data for the newly created record. I am going to change this name. I have run this update command and it has updated the data and name is changed to bridges. Earlier it was Adam. In the elastic if you just look at now you can see the name has been changed to bridges. So we have seen how monsters can insert and update the data. We had couple of element in this collection before we started this monsters, uh, we are not able to see those records in the elastic. However, all the new records we can see those are coming into the elastic document. If we need to sync the complete data which is already there, then we can do a couple of configuration changes. Here I am going to do those changes. First of all, here we have the direct read namespaces. When we apply this direct read namespaces, so whenever we will run the monsters, it will directly read to this collection. And if there is any data which is out of sync, it will sync that data. If we apply this direct read namespaces and start the monsters, it will read the complete data from MongoDB and sync that to the Elastic. If there are some changes, 
it will update that if there is no change it will ignore it and if there is new document then it will create that document there is another flag which is exit after direct reads whenever we will start and the data is already got synced then monsters will exit if this property is true but at this time we want both the behavior first sync the data from the database and then listen to any change so we will keep this flag as false only i'll start this again here now you can see we have got all the data that is there in the database it has the data which was there earlier and the new data now again i'll update the data i'm going to change it back to adam and this has been changed to adam and still we have the earlier data by default my db dot customer index created if we just need to change this name then we can do it in the configuration file and here within the mapping we can define the different mappings so for each namespace we can define our own index name so we have the namespace my db dot customer for that we want to create the customer index we are expecting now we should have the customer index created you can see we have got the customer index and if we just need to search the records now from this index and again this index has also been updated with the all the data that we have in the mongodb if we do the delete operation i'll apply the delete command here we don't have that in mongodb and we shouldn't have that in the elastic as well now you can see adam has gone there could be a scenario wherein you don't want to sync all the data some of the data you don't want to sync based on certain conditions for that we can apply filter and that filter we can configure either in some different file or we can also add that filter within the config file itself so here we have the filter within this filter we can define our own script this function can return true or false if it is true that means the update will happen to the elastic if it is false there will be no update so it is a filter operation that we are going to do this is a java script script that we have written over here instead of that we can also add the go code which is the filter operation that we can define over here with this configuration if we have the document within our collection by the name of test it will not be updated to elastic otherwise it will update everything else i'm going to update this document i am setting this name to test and updated it pp1 record is there but there is no update if i change it test1 instead of test we have got the test1 that means monsters has filtered out the document based on this script we will see one more scenario and that is whenever we need to update to elastic cell but we don't want to map all the properties or maybe if there is some property we want to update it in elastic by different name for that we can define the script where you can define the different script based on different namespaces here we have just customer for this namespace we are going to define the script again here you can define the group script or you can define the script based out of javascript for that you just need to provide the namespace you need to provide the path that path you can define in the external script or you can just inline like this so i'm just going with the external script at this moment and here we have the file i'll open this file we have defined this mapping function that is going to return the object but we can modify that object for example here we have this property name and this property we want to insert in the elastic by the name of first name we can just define the property first name and then we don't want this name property to be added into elastic so we can just delete the property talk dot name similarly if you also want to delete some of the other properties such as email then we can do that so let's run the monsters again let's see in the elastic here now you can see we have the property first name adam1 and it has removed the property name by applying the script you can do any of the operation filter map etc when we are applying these scripts such as map filter etc all of these are called the middleware transformations here we have written this transformation in javascript you can write in go and that would be a better way as per the documentation and if you need to write them you can just follow the monsters advanced tab and here it has provided the operations the operation that we have defined is map and filter the last thing that we are going to look at is the verbose flag so if we just enable this now 
here you can see we have the info log and we don't have any tracing at this time. But now I have enabled this verbose as true. I'm going to restart the monsters. If we just go to the trace.log, here you can see whatever operations we are doing, it is adding them in the trace as a debug log. So you can see it will show you all the logs. In this video, we have seen how we can configure monsters to update into the elastic. We have seen different ways in which we can update the elastic. If you need to look at different configuration, you can go through the monsters documentation. Here you will find the details of different configuration based on different requirements. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and happy coding.